planet Earth needs our help. Climate change is threatening the survival of many animals we love. Africa's wild elephants. Tigers in India. Turtles in Australia. Monarch butterflies in Mexico. Bees in the UK. And here in the Arctic, the wonderful walrus. So we're exploring what we can all do to help. Six kids on five continents with one mission to save our wildlife. and I'm eight years old. And I made it my mission to highlight what's happening to our world. This is the Arctic at the top of our planet. And I've come here because this place is on the front line of our fight against climate change. Temperatures here are rising faster than anywhere else on Earth. And because of that, the ice is melting and turning to water. For the wildlife that lives here, it means a daily battle for survival. In this program, me and some of my friends from around the world are investigating how climate change is threatening some of the animals we love. Even the ones in our own gardens. And as a keen artist, I'm going to be painting them as well. Starting with this wonderful walrus, but will I be able to see some in the wild? Well, that's why I'm here, so let's get going. I'm setting off from the port of Longibien, which is the closest town to the North Pole. And it doesn't take long before we get our first sighting of some wildlife. Look, look, over there. A humpback whale! I can't believe how lucky we are to see this! Oh, we're getting the tail! Woo! I'm really quite emotional about it. I'm really happy. But I've got to remember, the main reason I'm here is to look out for walrus. Because they are affected by all this melting ice caused by climate change on planet Earth. And after two hours on the boat, it looks like we're in luck. Look over there! They're walruses! They are huge! I just am so happy I see such large and wonderful creatures. I love their adorable little eyes. So tell me more about them. I've arranged to chat with one of the world-leading experts in polar wildlife. You see their different colours? It's because they're molting their hair. Are you worried what climate change might do to these beautiful walrus? I am. I truly am. Because all of the animals that I have spent my whole life working on live in sea ice, and the sea ice is disappearing. And although a lot of people don't understand how important that is, think about the rainforest. If there's no rainforest, there's no rainforest animals, right? Yes. If there's no sea ice, there's no sea ice animals. That's completely true. They need their home, just like any animal does. So is there a danger that they could become extinct? Definitely, because they're having to spend more time on shore. And on shore, they're much more easily preyed upon by polar bears. Walruses and polar bears are arch enemies, and polar bears generally win. But isn't it true that the walrus population around here has been going up? Yeah, it's been going up for decades now. They became protected in 1952, after they'd been hunted very, very heavily. But after 1952, no one is allowed to kill them, and they've started to do better. It's great to hear 
that walrus in this part of the Arctic are protected. They're such lovely and sociable creatures. Look how they're huddling together. But the melting sea ice isn't a problem just for walrus. It's also bad news for one of my favourite animals, the Royal Bengal Tiger. And here's my painting. Pretty cool, right? The thing is, as the ice melts here in the Arctic, it causes sea levels to rise all the way in India, destroying the tiger's habitat. So here is environmental campaigner Lissy to tell us more. I am travelling to the world's largest mangrove forest. spread across more than a hundred islands from India to Bangladesh. It's home to more than four million people. And amazing wildlife. I'm hoping to actually see a wild tiger. Anil is helping me. He works with the government rangers to protect them. But he says my chances of seeing one are slim. The Royal Bengal Tiger is endangered. Only a few hundred remain here. So when was your last time when you ever saw a tiger? Two months back. I don't know. These two calves with mother and male also. Whoa. For many years, there has been a major crackdown on poachers hunting them for their fur. But the tiger's problems are far from over. I'm here looking for evidence for the biggest threat to their future. As the ice caps melt, the rising sea levels are overwhelming these islands. Storms known as cyclones are also becoming more frequent. Climate change is destroying farming communities and the tiger's natural habitat. As the water moves in and the islands get smaller, tigers and humans are brought closer together. This video shows the moment a tiger strays into a village. He is rescued by Anil and the team at the forestry department. And after a medical checkup, the tiger is released. Well away from the inhabited islands. It's become clear to me that the people of the Sundarbans don't just want to save themselves, but also the tiger. With tiger numbers so low, it's hardly surprising we didn't spot one. But I have heard two more tigers have strayed into villages. They have also been rescued and taken to this center. Whoa, it's my first time seeing a tiger. They are so huge. Witnessing its stunning bright colours, its size and strength will live with me forever. But I'm also very sad and worried about their future. A hundred years ago, there were hundreds of thousands of tigers. But today, there is only two and a half thousand left. Their survival is really very important. Wild. What a magical moment! But it's not just the giants of our natural world that are in trouble. It's also bad news for insects, like this amazing monarch butterfly. They may be small, but butterflies are so beautiful. And back in the UK, my friend Rebecca has been finding out what we all can do to help them.
Ever since I was just a little girl, I've always loved butterflies. In fact, when my mum and dad built me a playhouse in my back garden, I converted it into my very own butterfly farm. This led to me starting my own YouTube channel, where I share my passion for butterflies and try to inspire other kids to get interested in them as well. Look at those beautiful wings. I've even been able to film caterpillars turning into a chrysalis and then into butterflies. Our back garden has become a haven for butterflies because of all the work me and my sister have done growing plants that they like. But there's one particular butterfly that I've always dreamt of seeing in the wild, but I never have. It's called a monarch, but to stand any chance of seeing it, I've got a long journey ahead of me to Mexico. This forest is where the monarchs live during the winter. And I'm hoping today is the day I finally get to experience one of the greatest wildlife spectacles on Earth. I'm so excited. We've got a difficult trip ahead of us on a dirt road leading up to the top of a mountain. But eventually, I get to see what I've come for. Look, there's a monarch butterfly right there, look. Every year, newly born monarchs travel 3,000 miles from Canada and the USA to spend the winter in the warmth of this forest. And when they arrive, they put on quite a show. There's literally so many monarch butterflies. This is really cool. It's honestly amazing. The weird thing is, the monarchs always seem to come to the same place. The reason why they huddle together like this is to keep warm. It's like when I snuggle it with my sister on a cold day. But as the sun comes out, the butterflies stretch their wings and take to the sky. It's all inspiring. It looks like there are hundreds of thousands of butterflies in this forest, but the truth is that climate change is a massive threat to their survival. To find out more, I'm meeting Marco Antonio, a butterfly conservationist. Okay. So why is climate change causing so many problems for the monarch butterfly? The monarch butterflies are very sensitive to the climate change. Actually, the monarch butterfly, they need a special temperature. This forest is the perfect temperature for the monarch butterfly. So with the climate change, we have more storms that change this temperature. I know they're officially classed as endangered now. Does that mean there are fewer monarch butterflies in the wild than there used to be? Yes, according to some studies, we've seen a drop of 80% in the size of population over the last 20 years. And so it does mean, Rebecca, that we need to protect the forest. What a day I've had witnessing this amazing spectacle in Mexico. It's made me even more passionate about butterflies. home in the UK, my butterfly farm is really coming to life. <laughs> and this is why I need your help, because just like Mexico's monarchs, the UK's butterflies are in trouble too. The good news is that there's something quite simple that we can all do about it. Ask your mum or dad if you can grow some plants like lavender or these buddleias. The butterflies love them. And you'll be helping to save UK butterflies from possible extinction. Back to you, Anishwa. Wow, that was spectacular. And it's great to hear that we can play our part to protect butterflies in the UK. Next, we're going to see the biggest land animal on our planet, the African elephant. I needed a big canvas for this one. The climate crisis is causing elephants a massive problem. So here is award-winning environmentalist Elian in Kenya to explain more. Africa, where vast plains and forests are filled with the sound of wildlife. 
There is nowhere else like it on Earth, and yet we are destroying it. This is Savo National Park. It's hardly rained here for over two years. Climate change is now a bigger threat to these animals than illegal hunting and poaching. We are experiencing our worst drought in 40 years. My favorite animal, elephants, are fighting for survival. They normally travel long distances with plenty of vegetation for food and water along their journey. After two and a half years of little rain, the rivers are no longer flowing. On a dried out riverbed, we spot a mother and her calves looking for a sign of water. This heartbreaking footage that I found shows what happens when the water runs out. This young elephant has collapsed and is barely breathing. He was discovered by tourists. Every hour counts. So, the calf was rehydrated with a drip while a helicopter was scrambled. He was flown to a specialist care center for sick elephants. The little calf was named Amoli by his rescuers. He survived, but only just. To find out how Amoli is getting on, I have come to what is effectively an orphanage for elephants. Here, humans replace their mothers until they're old enough to go back to the wild. The Sheldrick Wildlife Trust originally set up centers like this to take care of elephant calves who had lost their mothers to poachers. But now, they are rescuing young elephants because of climate change. And this is Molly, yeah. one of the drought victims. Hi, Molly. Every day after breakfast, the orphans are taken by their carers into the wilderness. The hope is to build up their confidence and independence. All preparation for when they become adults and join a wild herd and leave their human carers behind. What are Emily's chances of ever returning back in the wild? Actually, Eliam, uh, the whole purpose of doing this is so that they can have a second chance of living a wildlife. So Emoli has got a big chance of going back into the wild because this is something that we have done over the years and it has been successful. We spot wild elephants heading towards a waterhole for the orphans. Water has become so scarce, increasing numbers of wild elephants are heading to the orphanage, to its man-made waterhole that has water pumped into it by a tank lorry. It's a chance for Amoli and the other orphans to mingle around with some of the very heads they may end up spending their whole adult life with. It's great to know that one day, Amoli will return to the very wilderness where he was found barely alive. Thanks, Eliane. That was so upsetting seeing those elephants going without water. But it's great that some people are helping to nurse them back to health. Next, we're focusing on the green sea turtle. I found this one quite hard to paint. Turtles are amazing creatures, but the rising temperatures are causing them a real problem. To find out why, we are travelling all the way to Australia, on the other side of the world. My friend Romney is there to find out why the turtles need our help. There's nothing in the world I love doing more than this. Seeing green turtles in their natural habitat is so special. I'm being careful not to get too close, remembering that I am a visitor to their home. I hope to become a marine biologist to study and protect amazing sea life 
just like this. But by the time I'm qualified, this awesome site could be much rarer because of climate change. This is Heron Island, where from November to March, about 150 green turtles come to lay their eggs each night. But there's a big problem. In 2018, scientists discovered that almost all turtles being born were female. With hardly any males to take part in mating, the future of Australia's green turtles doesn't look good. So what's going on? To help solve the mystery, I visit scientists carrying out a big study of green turtles on the island. So why are there so many more female turtles than males? Yeah, that's the interesting thing with reptiles, is that the egg eventually becomes male or female, depending on the temperature of the sand. And so the warm ones become female, and the colder ones become male. This is a big problem with climate change, because quite simply, if we raise the temperature of the eggs, then they're all going to become female. But there is hope. The university has been experimenting with cool ways to help create male turtles and ensure the species' survival. So what I'm doing here today is I'm actually applying cold seawater to my sea turtle eggs to cool the sand and to hopefully reduce the temperature in the nests. Dave has to apply just the right amount of water to all the eggs in the nest. You want to have a go? Sure. So just apply it nice and even, like you're spraying your, the grass. It's amazing something so simple can actually have an impact. Results so far are promising. Regular spraying, cooling the nesting area by a couple of degrees, does lead to an increase in males hatching. Though the scientists still need to do more testing before they recommend using the technique more widely. Before I left the island, I was incredibly lucky. Early one morning, I got to witness an awe-inspiring sight. Even if, for the moment, many of the hatchings are likely to be female. They are so cute, but so vulnerable. Anishra, this place and the animals in it are amazing, and it makes me so upset that their future is uncertain. We owe it to them to do everything we can to guarantee their survival. Thanks, Romney. And one thing you might not know is that sea turtles also live around the UK. And one thing we all can do to protect them is not letting harmful things like plastic bags find their way into the sea. The turtles sometimes mistake them for jellyfish and try to eat them. For our last film, I want to find out about something we can see in our own gardens, and that's bees. How are they being affected by climate change? And what can we do to help? So let's head back to the UK to catch up with a friend of mine called Alicia. Of all the creatures on the planet, one of the smallest is actually one of the most important, the bee. Some people are scared of them, but I love bees because without their help, we wouldn't be able to grow a lot of the tasty food we enjoy, like strawberries, peas, tomatoes, and apples. But bees are at risk as our climate changes and this could cause big problems. I am meeting Archie and his granny Lorraine. They are beekeepers and know a lot about these brilliant mini beasts. So Lorraine, why are bees so important? Bees are important to us because they provide us with pollination. They pollinate our crops, our trees, our plants and flowers. Lorraine told me that climate change is causing bee populations to decline. Because they struggle to cope with rapidly changing seasons and extreme weather, like droughts. There we go. To make sure we don't get stung by the bees, okay. we are putting on special suits to protect okay. us.
So, Archie, what do you love about bees? It's so fun just to see what's going on in the hive. They're so amazing to me. Whoa! This one I'm going to let you handle, OK? What's being filled in these little holes? Is it the honey? So it's most, some of them might be honey, but in these holes here, you'll have the brood, which is the worker bees. This is so exciting. Luckily, Archie and I aren't the only ones that care about the bees. There are lots of things being done to protect them. Across the country, bus stops have been created. Special bee-friendly bus stops I'm going on a ride to see some. Oh, there's some coming up, Nigel. Look at wow. the flowers on Look the top. Look at those pink flowers. Why are the bus stops so important? Bus stops are important because they attract bees and pollinated insects into our towns and cities. The plants make the air cleaner, which is good for people, bees and other insects too. Pretty cool, but what can people like you and me do to help the bees? Archie has a pretty good idea. A bee hotel. A bee hotel is a, is a home for solitary bees. It's a bee that lives by itself for its whole life. Can we make a bee hotel? Yeah, sure. All you need is a recycled can, some bamboo canes, and a bit of help from a grown-up. They have to be at least eight, eight millimetres thick, otherwise they're just going to get bugs in them. <laughs> you want to tie it as much as possible and so we can hang it up like this. So next time you see a bee in your garden, don't hope it buzzes off. Make it a hotel and hope it sticks around. Well, that's it from this special programme in the Arctic. The truth is, it's us humans who've put these majestic animals at risk. But we also have the power to save them from extinction. So let's all do our bit to fight the climate crisis and save our wildlife! <laughs>